What's up, guys, and welcome back to Bob Filling the Dunce. Today we are joined by our dog, Orville Redenbacher. <laughs> He's feisty. Yes. And okay. today we are recapping Genesis 11 through 13. Let's get started. So, the first of these three familiar stories is the story of. The Tower of Babel. Yes, oh, yeah, the, Tower the Tower of Babel. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of stories we to do. recap today. So. These people in the town decided they would make a huge tower to build their way up to heaven. And they thought they were very important, and they wanted to be as important as God. They weren't going to let anyone else in the tower either. So God, being almighty and powerful, destroyed the tower and made them all speak different languages. That's why people of different races in different countries speak different languages, like English, Spanish, you name it. And another little tidbit here is God told Noah after they got off the ark to be fruitful and multiply, but he also said to fill the earth. And so mm -hmm. their task was to move and separate and live all over the earth, and they had not done that. And so through the Tower of Babel, that's God helped them be obedient mm -hmm. um, and spread them out like he had planned. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right. So in our second story, we find Abram and Sarai which was Abraham and Sarah's names before God changed them. So they're journeying through Egypt. And so Sarah is described as a very pretty woman in this story. So Abram tells her that she needs to pretend that he's, that he's his, her brother. <laughs> and so that Abram won't get killed. So um, that they took Sarah. So Sarah agrees and... Pharaoh thinks she's really pretty. So, uh, Abram kind of gets really rich. He gets, like, cattle, camels, everything. <laughs> but then, eventually, Pharaoh uh, finds out about it, so he sends them out. In our third story, we're again talking about Abram. And he's dividing land with his nephew, Lot. So... Yeah. Um, Abram, he's very generous and he agrees to things. Lot, not so much. He, he's very greedy and he wants everything. So, Abram comes up with a compromise. And he says, Lot, you see everything here? That's yours. And then that back there, that's mine. He let Lot pick. Uh -huh. And of course, Lot picked the best of the best. Mm -hmm. Which later we'll find out, maybe... We don't always want to be selfish. Maybe that wasn't the, the best choice, and that's a little mm -hmm. foreshadowing. Turns out the place he was at was a very sinful town. Anyway, uh, John, what is your takeaway? My takeaway is, let me pull my trusty camera real quick. Um, now the Lord said to Abram, go to, go to your country and your kindred, yeah, kindred, kindred, mm -hmm. kindred and your father's house to land that that I will show you. Good deal. So God is giving Abram some more um, directions and instructions to obey. What about you, Jax? So I liked the part about the Tower of Babel. So <laughs> everyone there, they weren't working together uh, because of what God did to them. They were so greedy that um, God made them all speak different languages, and he destroyed their towel. Tower, not a towel. <laughs> um, so, uh, so they had to disperse and fill the earth like um, God told Noah to do after the flood. Well, that shows us that sometimes when we have to do things God tells us to, we always need help. We cannot accomplish anything that without him. Okay. So when he calls us to obey certain things, we can ask him for help to obey those things. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Okay, my takeaway today is that I am super thankful that the Bible tells us the good and the bad part of people's stories. We see Abraham being super obedient and trusting God in the really hard things in one moment. And then in the next moment, we see him get scared and lie or sin uh, because he wants to have full control over a situation, which ultimately means that in that moment, he's not trusting God. I'm thankful that the Bible tells us this because it reminds us that even all these great people all throughout the Bible 
are not perfect. They're real people. And that's really good news for me and for the rest of us because we're not perfect either. I am not perfect. None of us are. Imperfect people are all God has to work with. And even more amazing than that is knowing that not only does he use us, but he wants to use us. He chose us over all creation. He chose humanity to be his favorite and for us to be the way that we spread the gospel, that we tell others about Jesus. As we keep reading through the Bible, we will see lots of real people who sometimes make really bad choices and choose to sin. But because the Bible tells us that because the Bible tells us about it, we're also able to see how they come to God with those sins, how they ask for forgiveness, and that they continue relationship with him. I love that we're reading this account after we, we read Psalms, and um, we saw how real David was. You know, he had good days, and then he had bad days, and he always went to God, whether it was in a moment of, I sinned, and I'm in the wrong, and I need to ask for forgiveness, or we're great and we're super close right now, God. So our questions for today, did you know that you are useful to God? In fact, we have proof. Since you're here, that means he created you and he created you for a purpose. And the next question, do you know what purposes God has for you? Think of some of those things with your family and think of ways that you can live out your purpose. And today, parents, in the description box below, we have some extra information to lead in discussion during this question time, um, just to lead your kids and guide them in their purpose, because we all have purpose. All right, friends, thanks for joining us. We can't wait to see what happens with Abraham or Abram tomorrow. Bye. Bye.